out of ten people we were talking about, or nine ten, ten out of debt collectors, or nine times out of ten of these creditors who are claiming that they say debt, you we were talking about, oh. you it will fail to validate the claim. Now, why do you believe that? Well, personal experience. Yeah, do it slow. Yeah, do it slow, Rick. Why do you believe that? I believe it from personal experience. Okay, well, tell us. And the numbers of debt validation efforts that I have attempted, following their rules, following statutes, you send them uh, a request for a certain information, and they send you back a computer-generated cover letter that basically says, we don't know what you're talking about, pay us some money. And that's pretty much how the conversation goes. So what was the stuff, the information you were basically asking them to send to you? I was like, please send me proof that this agreement exists, that, that, the, that the amount of money that you're charging you want me to pay is exactly what I'm supposed to pay. Show me what it was that I did or contracted to do or used. If it's a credit card, you know, what did I charge? Show me that all of the fees and everything else that you've thrown onto this thing are actually valid. Show me that you didn't like add a bunch of other crap that has something to do with our agreement. Show me that this is the clean, this, you know, it's kind of like if I brought a hammer from you for ten dollars, you charge me five dollars interest over six months, and then close the account. I figure out how to pay you fifteen dollars, maybe sixteen dollars for mailing. You know, and if all of a sudden you want one hundred and fifty dollars for that ten dollar hammer, I'd like to know where the extra hundred and forty dollars came from. So no, stop right there. That's great. That's good, Greg. Not only tell them, okay, this is what I'm saying, folks, see, because what, uh, this is what I would do if I was a credit card company. I'd say it's all in the contract. <laughs> Read the contract. It's too font. It's 10,000 pages long. I would tell them, no, highlight it. Highlight the terms and the conditions in the contract because until you do that, I think you're just making this up. I don't think there's any valid uh, explanation within that contract that could possibly legitimize what you're claiming or what, what you're doing. What you're, so, Please um, highlight it and send it to me. Instead of you trying to read these 10,000 pages as a, well, it's in a contract, just read it, that's not my job. No. If they see it's in there, they wrote the thing, make them bring it. Make them bring the law forward. Because that's the law. Between you and them, that's the law. So if they're saying there's a contract, and uh, you signed the thing, and you made this private law now between you and them, you have to live and die by this law. You know, you might say they're a bunch of Shylocks, that's fine. But you knew what you were dealing with, you danced with the devil, you knew you were going to burn it. So, so you got to make the devil show the terms and the conditions, or the clause, they have to show it in the contract. So go ahead, Greg, what else would you ask those people to produce? Well, if we're talking about the original creditor, you don't have to worry about third-party uh, authorization. If you're talking about a debt collector, <coughs> uh, we know that... Uh, a lot of it. Now, honestly, we all know. Because, you know, let's assume that there's people on the call that are here for the first time. Um, what a lot of people do know is, what a lot of people do know, presume, thank you for busting me on my favorite bad word. Um, all right, um, yeah, I know, I know, it, it is, you know. You know, assume is to make an ass out of you and me, right? Um, Go ahead. All right. Um, so anyway, um, in most cases, in contemporary business, when a when a bill or a debt has been an alleged debt has been passed from the original uh, entity to a third party, that third party has either paid those people cash, written them a check for that debt on pennies on the dollar, or agreed to a commission at a fraction of the cost. All right, and. In addition to that, most of the creditors that are out there have insurance policies so that if they ever have an uncollectible debt and it goes to the third party, they actually get paid for the debt before it even goes to the third party. So they can write it off. I mean, if this is 
gorgeous how they have it set up. They can, you can get a debt with them. They can then write it off and cut and, and remove that from their profit. And they can collect the insurance on it and not have to claim that as profit because it's an insurance claim on a damage. So they get paid twice. And the third party debt collector pays them something, so they're getting paid like maybe almost two and a half times. And they're made whole. So they're made whole and they're coming back and telling you that they're not made whole and you owe them this money. So you have to wonder, well, if you've been made whole, well, what am I supposed to do? If you haven't received, if you haven't been harmed or injured, and no man has been harmed or injured, and you guys, in your wisdom, created this banking system and insurance system that makes it impossible for you to lose. Um, why are you bothering me? Okay, why aren't you? Yeah. Stop there a second, please. All right, you're doing good. Go ahead. But what what you folks might not have just noticed is Greg went from square dancing to tap dancing. What Greg just did is he just shifted jurisdiction. And I don't want to I don't want to shift jurisdiction yet, Greg. I want to still concentrate okay. on uh, just concentrate on uh, statute. Concentrate on the law of the contract. Don't try to throw a trump card in because you danced with the credit card company. So you bound yourself with the devil. You made a deal with the devil. You are going to get burned. There's no doubt about it. There's somewhere in that contract where you get fried. So let's just work with trying to stay in honor with the person that you decided to dance with. Okay? Go ahead. Keep going with that. All right. So if you, if you don't know anything about what goes around behind the scenes, and you think the only thing that exists is, you think this credit card company actually reached into their pocket and gave you money in order to buy that refrigerator, which they didn't, but you believe that, because that's what the contract looks like. Okay, the contract looks like, you know, Visa, MasterCard, is gonna reach into their pocket, pull out $500 for me to buy my new refrigerator, okay? And so, if you're old-fashioned farmer guy from 1800, you're thinking that's exactly what happened because back in 1800, that's the only thing that could happen. All right? There was nothing else. So, you believe it. So if you yeah. believe that, okay, then you're thinking, well, I should pay this guy back because he put his money out there to buy my refrigerator and so he really owes my refrigerator so I pay him off. Okay, okay. What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, is I really don't want to uh, go down that path where because... A credit card company did not give you money. A credit card company did not give you paper. A credit card company gives you what? Credit. That's right. So I don't want to hear anything about money because money is just a medium of exchange. Now, whether I trade you 300 pounds of cow manure and you give me uh, 600 pounds of uh, the best uh, Chicago blackwash that you can find, that's money. So I don't want to confuse people with thinking that a credit card company gave them what did not give them money. They gave them something which they believed was worth value to them. Well, they would have never answer these people or add, accept that their uh, conditions or their for value. So all I'm trying to well, say, Greg, let's I make know, this... I know, you don't want to say, I, I know you don't want to say money, but but for, for 90% of the common man, they think that that represents money. Okay. All we're trying, all we're trying to say is what things do these people, what things does the credit card company or their representatives or any debt and did any somebody who gave you something and demands something now, and, and, you know, the restitution, what do they need to present to you or to court to keep moving that claim? Now, don't go down on money. Don't do any of this other nonsense. We're just doing a generalization for anybody who owes you a debt, the beliefs of you owe them a debt. What do they need to be anybody, well, anybody who wants to move anything to a court has got to bring the law in the back. Okay. Now, we're not talking about that when I said to you before. What we were doing was like saying, how do they validate and make the produce the facts and the evidence to move the court? That's the question. You said 90% of them can't produce and they can never be able to validate the debt. Now, what, how would you say they need to bring forth to validate the debt? They need to bring forth a man or a woman who knows that this is true. Okay. Now, stop right there a second, folks. You know, this is this is where this Greg just did his jurisdiction change on me again. Okay, this is common law. Okay, now in contract, if you made a deal with Coca Cola, Coca Cola does not have to bring any man or woman forward to bring forth because you reduced your status of a man and you merged it with a fiction. 
So, for you to get something of value from a two-dimensional world, you reduce your status to that of a two-dimensional entity as well. So they are going to demand from you, this two-dimensional entity is going to say, well, you know, we demand from your person what we, what we agree as a medium of exchange, money, or what we deem had value. We are going to give you 10,000 cases of Coca-Cola, and you're going to give us 10,000 widgets or $10,000. So this is how they're going to bring you into court. Now, can you play the old trump card and say, oh, well, this is common law land, and you know what, I'm going to beat these Coca-Cola out of every damn Coca-Cola can they sold to me. They sold me 10 million Coca-Cola cans, so I'm going to beat them out of their money, and I'm going to say, ha, ah, there's nobody with any first-hand knowledge that could say that that signature on that piece of paper between me and Coca-Cola is legitimate. You know what, honestly, technically, yes, people can do it. Do I think it's disgusting and evil? Yes. And you're worse than a lawyer to me. Because you know how to take advantage, how to take candy out of a baby's mouth. Because, like, say Greg had a company, and he just decided to make his own new Coca-Cola company in Chicago. And Greg had a whole bunch of stockholders, like his mom and Mike from Private and everybody joining in and giving Greg money to build up this wonderful corporation. So Greg created a corporate entity. I come along, call because I know common law. I'm going to order 10 million cans of Greg Cola. So I get Greg's Coca-Cola coming to me. I tell Greg, ha, prove that's my signature. Prove this, prove that, prove this, ha, ha, ha. You're screwed. This call wind up with 10 million cans of free soda? Absolutely. What happened to all those stockholders? What happened to his, his mom and everybody gets invested in that corporation? They trusted me that I would do a certain thing for certain, for return for something. So now, what's happening now is it's been going along so smoothly for the corporations to keep doing this to people. All people have to do, what Greg would have to do then, as a good businessman would say, Carl, honestly, uh, this stuff is going to get wacky. You guys are starting to drag us into common law, and you guys are starting to do this to us. We're losing uh, exponentially. We're, we're going downhill fast. So now, we're going to have to slow this process down. So, Carl, if you want $10 million of great Coca-Cola out of the great Coca-Cola Corporation, Carl, we're going to need a $10 million bond. So that way, if your check bounces, or anything happens between the transaction between you and the trading common law, we are holding your freaking bond. So you're going to sign this $10 million over to the corporation known as Great Coca-Cola. Okay, now, what I'm saying to you folks, this is what's going to happen. It's, it's commerce is just going to slow down because the corporation is going to say, how do we get somebody to use their debit card or credit card or sign a mortgage without making sure they're bonded? Because everybody just did it on their word. You'd have a credit rating. And your credit rating just established, based upon your acts in the past, your inactions in the past, how good your word was to paying off the debt. So if they just say, look, everybody's learning how to beat us, you know what? Either they're just going to all wrap up shop, or the, 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 the banks and everybody's just going to wrap up shop and say, look, that, uh, like there's only one, pe one person out of a hundred on this planet that lives in the United States. You know what? We're going to take. We're going to go to China. We're going to go to India. We're going to Africa, where this 99 percent of the world lives. We don't need you, United States anymore. You know what? You guys figure out how to trade rubles or or or, or wampum or, or she shells with each other anymore. You don't want to deal with us anymore. You don't want to act honorably with us anymore. We're not going to deal with this bond nonsense with you people. You know what? God bless you. We're going to unbolt all your machines and factories, and we're just shipping them to China, and you guys can just work in McDonald's for the rest of your lives because we're not going to extend credit to you people anymore. How hard is it to get a loan nowadays? It's almost impossible. How hard is it to start a business any day? Because the banks are scared that they're not going to get, be able to, you could say, screw over the people anymore. So they're afraid that these people are going to learn how to get out of any kind of credit card debt or any kind of loan or any kind of mortgage, and the people will learn how to do it. But then what are we going to have? So that's what I'm just saying to folks. You know, be careful. You know, you know that's going to get what you wish for. You know, but what's going to happen to the next generation? The people who try to establish credit or get homes or try to get business going. That's why I say it's so important. To, if you want to play in that jurisdiction, if you want to play in that two-dimensional world, believe me, if the best you can do, like I said to you folks all the time, is say, look, by my word, in good faith, the best I can do, I'm out of a job right now. Right? The best I can do right now is give you $2 a day, day for the next 365 days, whatever, until I pay the debt off. Believe me, as soon as I get back on my feet, as soon as I get a job, as soon as I win the lottery, believe me, you will be the second person that gets paid off. You know, first I'm going to say, you know, praise to Jesus, whatever. But you're going to be the very next person I want to pay off. And there you go. So this is what I try to say to folks. You know, uh, 
where he's going to bring you down a second jurisdiction, common law, and how to wipe out these people and get them off your back. But um, if so many people do it, like I said, it's going to be a domino effect. And it's going to be a house of cards, and it's going to collapse. So I'm just, this is just my belief. You know, this is what I really believe I can see happening. So uh, if you want to play in the two-dimensional land or three-dimensional land, or you know, that's fine. But, uh, well, but actually, uh, Carl, Carl, if you think about it, though, I'm sorry for jumping in. No, like, no, no, man. Um, but at the same time, you know, two different, two different bad things happen. One, people start to feeling entitled, and two, banks decided to really go berserk on usury. If you really stop and think about the fact that the prime lending rate right now from the Fed to the bank is 0.1%. Just about nothing. Right? The banks get printed money for free. Then they charge you 18 to 21% interest on borrowing. They are at a point right now where their profit margins are obscene. It is absolute, you know, gun to your head usury. All right. So, both what happens is that instead of everybody being in the middle and being honorable, the people became more and more dishonorable, and the banks became more and more dishonorable to the point where the the chasm between the providers of currency and the users of currency is so wide right now that it's unresolvable. And your your prediction of having a new economy and a new form of currency and everything like that, I think that that's inevitable. I think that the game that was set up, I personally think the game that was set up is at an end. Okay, I don't think it can go, it can't go very much longer. And if it does, it can only be done at the point of the bayonet. And um, I think that there will be a new uh, development of currency. And I think that in the short term, it's going to go back to what everybody can trust, and that is straight barter. I'm a plumber, or I know how to do plumbing, I'm going to fix your sink, and you're going to give me a bushel of corn. And a lot of that stuff is already going on outside of the, the large metropolitan areas. You go into Iowa, and Nebraska, you know, Southern Illinois, Indiana, throughout the heartland. I don't know how things are on the coast because I'm not familiar with the internal economy. That I, I know my 10, 12 states over here, and a lot of people are doing that now. And it's all hush hush because nobody wants to talk about it because they all still are afraid of the IRS. And so a lot of people are just doing that, you know. And it's all being done on a handshake and a nod, and you know they're trusting their neighbors, and their neighbors are coming through, and that kind of stuff is really happening. And that's yeah, how ordin- that's how ordinary folks in the heartland are dealing with the problem. But believe they're it or not, basically opting out. They're just opting out. Believe it or not, it's funny too. The reason why the banks don't want to loan money is because the interest rates are so low, and it, to them, they're waiting for the interest rates to rise. To, uh, to, you know, start loaning money out again. Well, so, only on, so, oh, but Carl, be, be clear on that. Only on secured loans. Right. The interest, they, are, they, are under, they are under a lot of scrutiny when it comes to a secured loan with a collateral. But they have no scrutiny when it comes to credit cards. And that's why they push everybody to credit cards. Well, what because I'm saying... They, they can do well, whatever they want. What I'm saying, like, you know, venture capitalists, Venture capitalists are sitting on their money and they're just waiting for the interest rates to go up. So people might be, like they're saying, that these corporations and these college institutes are spending billions of dollars just waiting for the interest rates to go up so they can put the money back into the economy. But at this point, they said, you know what, it's better for us to stick our money under our mattress than to put it in an economy that might go under. So until they actually see that people are borrowing again, because borrowing means growth. Borrowing means there's, there's corporations starting up and there's a, a demand for currency. There's a demand to spend again. So like George Bush said to you guys after 9-11, don't let the, don't let the terrorists win. Go out to those malls and keep products and keep buying Nintendos and keep buying houses. Just keep the money, just keep the economy going. 
Don't be afraid to go out of your house. Don't be afraid to go to the shopping mall. Go out there and spend, spend, spend. So as long as there's a demand for the currency, the interest rates will go up. And so the, the, the venture capitalists, you know, people who might be millions or millionaires or billionaires will feel a little less hesitant to putting money back into the stock market or putting it into their local communities if they believe there's going to be real growth. But until they believe there's real growth again, they're just going to buy bullion of silver or, or gold ingots and they're going to uh, stick it under their mattress and just wait for the economy to collapse. So, uh, like I said, that's why I just try to say, everybody, you know, if everybody just starts to learn to keep their word and play fair and square, you know, I, I just think this is the way to more go at it and try to figure out how, who's going to screw the other side first. Are we going to screw the banks or the banks going to screw us? Who's going to do, who, who's going to screw who now? You know, who's got the new latest 